Welcome back, Akron fans! This is Shadow 3 with another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have a match between Gode and Cyber. No, and Catalyte. It's gonna be on Tomb of Heroes. So, Gode, we've seen a lot in 0k, of course. But, he, of course, he does play Akron a bit as well. And he is the. Well, I think second strongest at the moment player. He did losing a Cybernetic Pony in the most recent tournament, though that lasted quite a long time. So he's one of the strongest players in Akron, which should be no surprise to anyone who's seen him play in any other game he plays in. And he's also the pretty much master of permacloning, so we should be seeing a lot of that this game. Now, Cadillac, on the other hand, is more of a random player. He has a tendency to just do sillier things at times. And also to make the game drag on. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't do that in this game, but you can never be sure. So, see how it goes. Let's get it started. Now on the west side of the map, we have Gore. He is playing Grekum, while Catalan, on the other hand, the east side of the map, is going for Species Selector. He. Okay, never mind. He's pausing, choosing his species, going for CISO. So, CISO versus Grekum. I'm kind of glad recently we haven't seen a lot of mirror matches. It used to be the case it was a lot of CISO and Grekum only mirrors. It was just okay. That has actually been the case for a while. It's been a lot of been a lot of all species being played recently in the last few months. Just there was a while where it was just CISO and Grekum, and that was kind of annoying. Thankfully, it's not the case. But we do have a game of CISO versus Grekum, and Kore is going for more of an economic start from the looks of it, getting a quick octopod up, while Catalyte is not really showing his hand right now. No, he's... Okay, he is going for a bit of a safe start. Getting a Marine in the back. Marine and Special Ops in the front to scout out. While Gode is... Is he making any scouts? No, he's not even scouting the Arcticus. He's going for more defensive posture. Keeping the Arcticus in his base. Not moving out. Not scouting with it. Not putting it in any tricky points in the map. Like the North Statue Area or the North Base. No, he is just sticking here. While building up more and more RPs. Both players are going for an economic macro-based game. Neither one wants to go for a rush, and on a map this big, it's really no surprise. Despite the straight paths, rush attacks in Tomb of Heroes don't usually work out especially well, except for proxy rushes that take advantage of this dead space in the north side of each base. Those can work surprisingly well, but pretty much anything else is a toss-up, as well as it's going to work. And Gore is going for... Well, going for a bit of a scout. It looks like he's... Is he going for proxy? No, this is just looks like a scout. He's not going to be likely committing this. Just sending his Sepi and Faro pair forward to see what's going on in Catalyte's base. While Catalyte, on the other hand, has been doing the same thing since the start of the game. Sending in his his Special Ops and Marine. As you can see, it takes about three minutes for infantry to get across the map. Thus, quick rush strategies and proxies and such are tricky to pull off. Like It'd be a ten minute game even with a proxy. However, neither player is positioned to do that. Though Cadillac definitely going... F okay. He does have economy. He, see, 143 mark. He does have a lot of his RP set up. And compared to Gode, he's actually kind of ahead. Although Gode does have... When he is further in the future, he does have a very strong economy. 6 and 4. With a reef coming in at the 3-minute mark. Although, Cadillac's imagery dealing for a minute of damage. Is this going to be echoed out? I don't know. Cadillac doesn't appear keen on echoing this out. In fact, he's building an importer right in the middle of this area. Right in front of Gode's base. And Gode is setting up what appears to be a proxy. He does have a Seppi over here. I don't think he's actually planning on proxying, but... I don't know. Maybe he is. The Faro is going to run into the infantry over to the south. But if Gode is careful, he should be able to avoid that completely. If he just moves the Faro up to the north side. See, he's not making it clear. He is not making his plans at all clear. But that Faro would need to be there for a proxy to occur. And... I'd don't see Gode going for a proxy right now. I mean, a bunch of proxy Octos and an Octopod, although he doesn't have the Q Plasma for an Octopod. That would be very powerful, but Catalyte apparently has actually managed to get rid of Gode. This is probably not truly the case. Gode jumping back to the 322 mark, 30 seconds down from Catalyte. And he's apparently actually... Apparently what he was doing going forward was... That's what happened. Wow, what the... I... I am surprised. Gode has... He can't have thrown away the game yet. I mean, Sparrow's going to the south. He's clearly going for a proxy. I mean, why else would he be doing what he's doing? It's just that he's not checking on that Faro. This is very strange. As in, I hope the replay didn't bork up strange. But I have my suspicions. 
I mean, Cadillac is going for proxy. He's going for proxy, armory, and factory set. Well, Gode, on the other hand, I'm not sure what he's planning on doing. He has a Seppi up front, but unfortunately he is not in the chat right now, and I hope this replay did not bork, because apparently it's a really cool replay that actually does have permacloning as part of it. And that actually does have a lot of crazy strategies and such, but I don't see it. I mean... Gode jumping back to where the blue time move is jump where he was setting up before, but Okay, never mind. He's echoed out echoed out his moving forward, so he is actually going for an economic strategy. All that stuff we saw there was an echo. Apparently the replay looks like it's probably fine. However, Catalyte has not changed his strategy. He's still going for the armories, so he's still going for the importers, and I realized that I was I was emphasizing the Wow, it looks like everything's screwed up thing more than I should. Yeah, Akron has a history of replay problems, unfortunately. <laughs> So, it's actually a very real concern. It's been getting better, and we've basically had none outside of people modding the game, and playing a modded version of the game, and giving me a replay, and that occasionally screws up. But, other than that, vanilla replays on a vanilla game do seem to work fine. So, anytime I see that, I get very concerned, but it looks like it's fine. So, Cadillac, still going for economic. He is, like I said, going for a massive infantry rush, with a factory probably for either mechs or... Maybe Lancers and ATHCs. Probably just mechs, though. He has no Q Plasma. And in fact, he's going just pure... Pure infantry. Though surprisingly, he has... Okay, he's converted his Q Plasma into Liquid Crystal. That's what he's done here. And that is huge. While Godet, on the other hand, moving forward, he's setting up a Reef as well in the front. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't set up a bunch of Octopods to deal with this. I mean, half a dozen Octopods? That would shut this rush down right away. There would be no concern whatsoever, but no. Gode going for advanced structures instead, and that is going to give him air units, but I don't think it's going to give him fast enough. We'll see, though. It depends on what timing Cadillac goes for with an attack, but I think if Cadillac attacks, let's see, Foreman Mark, he doesn't have any infantry built up right now. If he started building up right now, he would be able to set up a pretty decent army. But it's hard to tell what the attack timing would be. The ideal attack timing is difficult to point out. The edge, of course, is the important thing, because without chronoporting in play, the Unplayable Past Edge is the most important part of the timeline, and Catalyte hugging it right now and doesn't have any units up to actually attack with. Main base, however, he is getting more importers. He wants to make sure they're a bit safer than they were before, being that they were right in front of Godea's base. That wouldn't have been the best idea. But he does have the importers set up in his own main base, as well as the factory and armories set up outside of Godea's base, and Godea is going to have still a bit of a hard time. That being said, it's a matter of timing. The longer it takes for Cadillac to deal with this, the worse off he's going to be. Gode getting chronoporting as well, and that, well, at the, basically the five minute mark he's getting chronoporting. Cadillac, the sooner he attacks, the better. Unfortunately, I think he might have actually gotten his imagery stuck here on this ledge. If the special ops, I think, can they go along? We'll see. Yes, they can. Okay, the, the special ops are fine, but still, at... Might have been a bit of a silly placement of the armories here. That being said, he might be going for more of a defensive position right outside of Godet's base, which could be interesting. Don't know what he'd accomplish with that. A rush right now would... This is, like, the only time he has to rush is right now. Chronoporting is being researched. There's no units in play, no Octopods, nothing. If he attacks at the Unplayable Past Edge right now, like, where this bookmark is that... We're on Godet's point of view, by the way. Cadillac has not set a bookmark where he wants to attack. Not at all aware of this, and getting rid of the importers too, thinking it's a path blocker, it's not, but hey, it still isn't really useful. At least he has a bit more room to maneuver. Now, that being said, Gorea has... He has the aerial control center being built up, he does have chronoporting, he could easily start getting up chronoported pods. while Catalyte... He has his infantry, but that's it. And a lot of armories to build infantry with, and a factory, and this is something Cadillac does. I forgot to mention this earlier. Cadillac loves his infantry rushes. He absolutely adores them. This is what he does every single game. It's just a line of armories. Just everywhere. This this is what he does. It's this big line of armories. That is his game, pretty much. And yes, I do love showing off the depth of field effects. Those were a lot of work to code, and I like to show them off sometimes. Anyway, Cadillac is going to be about ready. He, he should attack right now. Uh, well, when this goes in pillow past edge, this is the only chance he has. And even now, it's actually kind of tough. Gode is about 813 mark, getting up a bunch of octos. No octopods, one octopod, but that'll be overwhelmed by the amount of infantry coming in. I'm not sure Gode is aware of this. 
Most likely the players are playing with Sound Through Fog of War off, so Godet would have no reason to know that this giant rush is being prepared in front of his base. This, well, not even a rush, this proxy build. It's far from a rush, though. Two dozen infantry is not a rush. That is a proxy attack. Bit of an all-in. And Catalyte is running out of time. It, he's probably underestimating what he can do with the infantry he has right now. Getting a mech as well for anti-air, not a bad idea, but then again... Let's see, how many special ops does he have? He has all special ops, so he's definitely worried about detection. Special ops do detect, so he wants to have that ready. Mechs for anti-air, special ops for detection in the fire pods. I think the one thing he hasn't accounted for is the fact that Gode has chronoporting. And with chronoporting comes... Well, chronoporting, as we see right now. Gode does not follow the arrival, as is the usual standard for players. Not sure he's going to be trying to permaclone those right now. He probably will, as mentioned before. He is the master of permacloning. Catalyte, back to his base, has not built up any additional economy. He actually doesn't even have any marines here. Two of his boxes are off. He has two LC crates that are totally empty. The last one is 20 pulls away from being empty, so it's 1,600 liquid crystal... Sorry. 160 liquid crystal left. Off by an order of magnitude there. This is enough inventory. He has enough infantry right now. He has seven mechs. He has... I don't even know how many special ops right now. It, it, I, I can't actually count this. It's a great many. Three dozen, I'd say. Let's go with three dozen. And he's not attacking yet. Well, Gode, on the other hand, has chronoported back. Not sure what he's done with these chronoported troops, though. Neither player has actually checked the chronoporting right now. And Gode doesn't seem to be aware of this. I'm sh He's got to be aware of this at some point. I mean, he hasn't scouted this, but he did see... Marines coming in. He surprisingly not going for the front side of his base. I'm very surprised he hasn't actually checked that yet. He's checking the north. Looks like he's setting up to the north. And he is going for what looks like a permacolon. He does have his units set up here. He does have a couple of them getting chronoported away. And yeah, the the post chronoportees are getting chronoported again. So if he's not setting up a permacolon, which he probably is, he is definitely setting up a massive army of Echoes, or not Echoes so much because they are permanent, but he's definitely setting up a massive army of Chrono Clones, which, not a bad idea. It looks like he is trying to do some perma Echo Permacloning, basically. Trying to Echo this through and then get the Permaclones that way. All Catalyte just continuing to build up, so I'm just going to, I'm going to speed this up a bit. Sorry, this game will take a while if I don't speed it up. So let's go into double time, and oh, I, noticed, I just noticed the debug actually hadn't been coming up so far. How strange. Okay, well, anyway, that's separate bug, separate issue. Yeah, Cadillac continuing to build up, Gold Egg continuing to permaclone, and battles are not happening. Neither player really focusing on this. Cadillac hasn't even researched anything. He's just pumping out. Okay, there we go. Cadillac is attacking. He's going in for an attack, finally. And Gold Egg jumping back to. Actually, jumping back to when he finds the base. Looks like he actually found it in the, in the unplayable pass with the Chrono Port, and is dealing quite a bit of damage. This is... How is he dealing all this damage? Catalyte's got the more massive army, but we'll see. From Catalyte's point of view, he is going to be annihilating Gode's base. But jumping back here... Ah, I see. Gode just jumping back he, to Catalyte's base and attacking it directly, getting rid of a lot of the importers. So much for the main base being safe. I guess I was very wrong in that regard. But yeah, getting rid of the importers, and then from there... There's still five importers. Still five importers and five armories. And Catalyte, back in the presence... Or, this is Monkey Sorry, this is Catalyte's point of view. Monkey not playing. What am I saying? Catalyte is annihilating Godea's base, but Godea, of course, has chronoporting. He has permaclones, although, sheesh, that's a lot of infantry. I don't think I've ever seen as much infantry just coming through here, annihilating a base like this before. I... I don't even. And it looks like Godea, even trying to deal with this, is having a tough time. Yeah, Catalyte has completely annihilated not just Godea's base, but Godea's crates. Scorched Earth policy, I see, from Catalyte. Which is a little bit ironic, given that his main base was annihilated just now, although admittedly the crates were left intact. But yeah, that is... Wow. That is one hell of an attack. And coming through here, that... Sp special Ops going through, we're... Gonna see the attack once again, as Special Ops continue to attack. Well, this is the second time through. Getting rid of the crates, seeing basically a replay of what happened. Catalyte gets rid of all the crates, and... All the RPs, everything goes down. Kills everything, including the frame rate. Sorry about that. And 
Unfortunately for Catalyte, his Marines are a bit out of position, but still able to deal quite a bit of damage before they each die. Many brave Marines were killed today. But that's their job. Their job is to die for the sake of humanity. Not a very good job, mind you. I mean, the benefits are okay, but honestly, any job that has that sort of next to kin policy as part of it, might want to double check. <laughs> or rather, where your income has next of kin in the field. But it looks like Gode has legal class, and he is setting up some of his, of his pod class units over to the north side of the map, and it looks like he's going to be rebuilding over to the north side. Losing his main base, but having this big statue base, he can make full use of it. And Catalyte also has to deal with some of the far pods in his main base, but being that his main base was not scorched to the ground, he could rebuild his RPs if he wanted to. Not a lot of Q plasma here, but yeah, there's some. I mean, 600, sorry, liquid crystal. There's about 640 liquid crystal here. So he can grab that. But at the same time, he is not looking to the north, and given that he has no flying units, he can't easily look to the north. He could get a Lancer. Well, if he rebuilds the factory, he could get a Lancer and scout to the north. He could also scout to the southwest. He's really not. He's being quite incurious, I'd say. Going back to his main base with his entire army, but otherwise not really checking. And destroying the crates that, honestly, I think he needs more than Gode does. I mean, okay, I know that from the spectator point of view. I mean, Gode has taken the north side of the map. We see that Gode is going for that. We know that. But it's... This is going to be a bit painful once Candlelight realizes what's going on, because, I mean... Gode has this whole thing set up quite well. He has every, uh, He's basically rebuilding fully within a minute. Catalyte, on the other hand, has no resources, actually. He has 108 liquid... He has, yeah, 108 liquid crystal. He can start rebuilding LCRPs, but being that he's going around annihilating all the crates, he can't actually deal with the north side. He can't touch this. This is flying unit only, or teleporter only. He has no means to get to that base. None at all. And his Marines going back to his main base will find nothing, actually. The fire pod's already gone, and he could rebuild if he wanted to, and actually really should. But unfortunately, he can't do much other than run around with his infantry and not really do much. So at this point, Gole is just setting up his base, getting him more units, probably getting Corona Port a bit more, Permacolin a bit more, getting another Spire just in case, and probably going to get himself... Oh, Far Legos. Not a bad idea. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he just went with like, Faro Legos and Seppi Legos and just went around the map, set up a bunch of units, set up a bunch of RPs just around Catalyte. Catalyte doesn't even know it. He just, Gode just has RPs around the map, just takes the rest of the map while Catalyte is running around with these inventory units. And Gode has the safe base to the north. If he does that, that would be pretty amazing. We'll see though. He does have a Faro Lego up. And Corona pointing that back. Not sure what he's going to do with it, but we'll find out pretty shortly. Well, Catalyte just roaming the map. Looks like he just wants to kill what he can. Roaming around the map, making sure he knows what Gode is up to. And he's not going to find much. He's going to find a few RPs around the map. I hope he eventually gets suspicious enough and figures out the north side of the map is where Gode is hiding. But I don't know if he ever will, honestly. Now, Gode continuing to build up. He has... It's far Lego in the past, probably going to be permacloning that as well. Probably not going to go for what I expected before with the massive amount of splitting, though it would be cool if he did. Yeah, there's the far Lego. Likely to be Corona ported again. More of Octopods, Octopods coming up. Speed up the game again, because frankly, this is taking too long. Now, Gode. Not got much going for him. Catalyte at the southeast side of the map, continuing to the west, southwest side of the map, will likely be. He'll be finding Gode's resource processor sooner rather than later, but even then, he's actually taking the long way when it comes to dealing with them. Well, completely missing the important part, which is that Gode is over to the north. That is what counts. That is what matters. Gode is over here. This is where he is. Getting up a couple of Arcticuses as well, and more Far Legos with, with their, or their Chrono Clones. Likely going for Echo Permaclone here. Which we shall be seeing shortly, and yeah, we do already see there's some permaclone faro pods. So, Catalyte, however, has rebuilt a bit. He does have, we do see further in the future, he does have a couple RPs. He does have marine rebuilding RPs, and he should be able to find this sooner or later. But still, like I said, he's going around the map, seeing what's going on. Catalyte has not yet found the expansions. 
just about to turn and tear apart the RP the crates. I think this is too soon to tear apart the crates. I mean, like I said, Catalyte needs the crates more than Godet does in the rest of the map. And Catalyte is basically destroying his own resources rather than Godet's. Being that Catalyte has not much liquid crystal left. He has about four, he has about 500 liquid crystal left in all of his crates. And he has found one of the RPs, but that's it. So I think Catalyte's Scorched Earth policy is not going to work out too well once he starts needing Aryans and actually needs to breach this northern fortress. I mean, Godet has set up quite the fort here with all the units just hanging around, permacolining themselves, and ultimately making a larger and larger army. And we see more of that as Godet just goes back, gets more of that in, and continues to just increase the size of his, ar size of his army. I don't know if the Catalyte knows you do not leave Godet alone, ever. That is not what you do. He will make his army and make it again and again and again with the same army over and over until finally he has too big of an army and it's all for free. I mean, you notice Godet is floating while he's doing this. He's not even building units. He's just coronaporting them all. While Catalyte, he is going after the wrong targets. Gotta be honest, going around the map like this, slaughtering all the crates, that's just... He is shooting himself in the foot. Like, the only resources he's allowed to have exist are out of Liquid Crystal, getting Q Plasma. He has a factory. His only hope, his one and only hope, would be if he managed to somehow scrounge up enough resources to get Gate Tech which he could do, and then get a teleporter, and then teleport all of his infantry all at once to, actually, three or four teleporters, teleport everything all at once to the north, and then rip it apart. That would be his only shot. Unfortunately, he has no liquid crystal with which to do so. Or, nowhere near enough, at any rate. And, annihilating the crates is not doing any favors, so I don't think Catalyte's gonna win this game. It's dragging on a bit as it is, but I don't see Catalyte getting through this alive. Because he does not have the resources, and Godet is actually taking them. He has far pods, far, far legos, I should say, everywhere. He has the north side. He's got quite a lot of resources here. I mean, all these crates, they're pretty healthy. Although they are starting to run low. Well, some of them are running about to half. But still, four crates, some of them running to half. Overall, Godet has got a massive web of chronoports, but he's doing fine. He's actually floating on top of the fact that he has his entire north base to himself. So there's really not much that could be changed, honestly, at this point. Some of the Fire Legos have revealed themselves. Catalyte is aware of this, or he should be if he's paying attention, but I don't think he's jumping back in the timeline enough to see it. And he's going to lose an RP to it as well, going to the north. So Catalyte might now realize what's going on and also realize he has no resources with which to deal with it. I mean, Q-Plasma could work. He could do Q-Plasma conversion in order to get out of there. And a couple answers. This is his only chance to figure out what's going on. If he goes north, he will find it. But I don't know if he's going to actually do that. Looks like he might, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm a little concerned he's not going to actually find it. He does see the Faro Legos to the north. He's probably suspecting the north center base, the statue base, has been taken. Which it most certainly has. It is very much Godet's. And Godet right now has, like I said, even more. Every second that passes, that's more and more chronoported units, more and more permacloned units. And Catalyte's army scouring the earth of resources to really no avail. I mean, the only resources he's left are basically Godes. <laughs> like I said, Catalyte has destroyed his own chances at winning right now. Or at least massively reduced them. His one chance would be a couple good teleporters, and I don't think he's going to go for that. Getting the Q-Plasma for it, definitely possible, but he's just going for Lancers instead. And that will not work against Faraligos. There's no way it'll work, and... Okay, Catalyte apparently in the chat saying he's just having too much fun killing crates. I have a distinct feeling Catalyte doesn't like winning. I've just noticed in a lot of the games that Catalyte seems to enjoy just screwing around more than he does actually winning the game. And uh, Excuse me for a second. Sorry. I'll be back in just a moment. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to have a phone call then, but those happen sometimes. Anyway, back to the game. So where we left off, we had Gore and Catalyte. Basically, like Catalyte doesn't like to win. As far as I can tell. I mean, Catalyte had all this time. He actually could have beaten Gore in this game twice. He could have attacked early on, got a timing attack, won that way. He could teleport in the base. He could have. He doesn't have the money for it anymore. But when he had the cash... When he had the liquid crystal before he annihilated all the crates, 
annihilating his chances to win simultaneously, he could have gone on enough resources to teleport his units up to Gode's base. Had he done that, he'd have had a decent chance, actually. I mean, this mass of infantry would be able to annihilate pretty much anything that Gode has. Well, okay, maybe not anymore. It's hard to say. Gode has permacloned a lot. And these are far Ligos. They are splash. They are anti-massive units. But even then, that's a lot of damage. That's, at the very least, would annihilate most of the stuff on the ground. Though, that much legal class units, damn near impossible to stop completely. Uh, bear in mind, legal class units split down. They can become, well, in this case, Octo and Seppi. But that's enough. Given the amount of resources that Gode has floated so far, Catalyte is kind of done. It's kind of a foregone conclusion, and unfortunately the amount of units in the map, the game is progressing at a bit of a snail's pace. Like, this is fast forwarded at 100% speed and nothing is happening. I apologize, the, there's only as much the game can do sometimes, and trying to deal with five dozen units, or about a hundred units actually, is not one of those things. Even, go, even in the game they were noticing it, yeah. Too many bloody units. Go kill something. Make stuff happen. Yeah, Catalyte realizes that he has too many units that are moving around. That's the important thing. The fact that they're moving. If they stop moving, be fine. But they are moving, so that sucks. And I can't actually speed up the game. Because I'd like to put it to 200%. Try to just speed things up. Get things moving to apparently the second engagement. Because apparently there's supposed to be two engagements in this game. But I can't do that. Cannot speed this up meaningfully, unfortunately. So I apologize, because there's really not much I can say. Catalyte has basically lost... <laughs> Godin, maybe I should kill some! Yes, yes you should! That would help out a ton! Although admittedly part of the problem is they are across the timeline. So if you chronoport back and slaughter the units, you know, if you could send that mass of Faro Ligos south, just do south, each one of them, all of them, as one big hierarchy, just straight to the south, you should be able to win. Because you'd probably be able to outrange the Marines. The reason the teleporting would work, whereas just being attacked directly wouldn't, is because of the fact that Marines and Special Ops have terrible range. Teleporting, of course, completely nullifies that uh, disadvantage, but Far Legos would be able to just capitalize on it, moving south. And of course, the main base would be annihilated. The, Lur the Lancers and Tornads would be annihilated. Wait, there's Tornads. Oh, sorry, Lancers and Mechs would be annihilated. And everything would die. And Godet, it looks like right now, he is, in fact, moving south. And he is getting rid of this. Very quickly getting rid of a lot of the production structures. Not getting rid of the units themselves. They are over to the northwest. He is not attacking them. He really should. That is his target. And he's also not attacking the east. But at least this way, no more infantry can be built. Were that ever to be a possibility, though, like I said, teleportation. Teleportation is what is necessary. And wow. Apparently the game is lagging so much that buildings stop dying when they're killed. At least briefly. Yeah. Wow, that's a weird... I didn't know about that lag artifact. Apparently, buildings briefly don't die when they're killed. But ultimately, they will, and... Down go, will go the units as well, and... Actually, intercepting... At 2634 mark, we are seeing an interception here. Catalyte is trying to get into a fight, and at least this will speed up the game slightly, as all the units are dying. Like I said, the range advantage is coming into play. The infantry basically coming in one at a time from the Faro League's point of view, and very quickly dying. As you see, the Faro League's point of view, that actually you can't because there's way too many Corona Porti lines. No, I'm just going to turn those off for right now. No one like to have them on. They're great to know where things are going, but honestly, this is too much. Just highlight them, show that they're being Corona Ported in, and yeah, now we can look from their point of view. And yeah, basically, units coming in one at a time, Catalyst losing all of his inventory. Like I said, they needed teleportation. Or, you know, higher tech support. Catalyst doesn't like higher tech support either. I don't know if I've ever seen him build a macro... I think he's built a macro pad at least once. I know he has. But he loves armor units. He loves playing inventory. He really needs to learn to love teleporters on top of that. Because inventory and teleporters are perfect fits for each other. Inventory need teleporters, and teleporters work wonderfully with inventory. And there we go, now the game is starting to get back on track for speed. The Far Ligos annihilate Catalyte's base. Gold has taken this game for certain. And Catalyte, back in his base, does have a few Lancers set up. A couple mechs set up. These Far Ligos have managed to deal the blow they needed to deal, getting rid of the massive infantry. 
and that should be it. Yeah, it should basically do it for the game. I don't know if Catalyst is going to surrender. He usually doesn't, so I don't think he's going to. Likely to be no exception, but we have at least caught up. The timing has at least caught up. We can probably speed up the game even at this point. No, no, we cannot. Okay. But the timing has caught up. That's the important thing. The infantry are gone, and Gode just running around with these far legal... Let me select one. Darn it. There we go. Far legals are roaming around the map, trying to get rid of what they can, and... I'm going to go at this point of view so we have the proper view of these guys. And there we go, getting rid of Catalyte's main base, and Catalyte has officially lost this game. And unofficially, we're waiting for another 12 minutes before he actually gets out of the game, because he's waiting for the game itself to tell him he's lost. But still, that is game. Catalyte has had everything annihilated, and from his point of view, he has seen everything annihilated. Not much he can do. Gate Attack really would have done him a lot of favors. Not annihilating the rest of the map would have done him a lot of favors. But... Yeah, Catalyte shouldn't have annihilated those resources. If you had those, you could have gotten teleporters. If you had teleporters, you could have just jumped into this base, and you could have annihilated the entire base and won the game. But alas, Gore wins. Gore! Just reviewing this, because like I said, this is what always happens every time. But we'll likely see this ending quickly. Lag's basically done, so... Eunice just going through the motions of killing once again. More death! All the death! I'm so morbid, aren't I? It's kind of the weird thing about casting RTS. I've got to say, casting RTS games feels really weird. I mean, I realize it's not actually real war or anything. There's no one actually dying as a result of this. But I always get the feeling when I'm doing this that somehow it's wrong. Like, I'm making entertainment out of carnage. But, oh well. Work for the Romans, I guess. Not that that's actually a good example. Anyway. That is that rather depressing musing aside, Gode has won. That's that's it. And realizing Catalyte just annihilated all of his own economy. Like I said, Catalyte shot himself in the foot there. So this is game. I mean it's just clearly Catalyte has lost, so I'm just gonna call it and I think it'll be it for me tonight. So let's just see what Yeah, pretty sound to end. So thank you for watching, and that is going to be it. So Hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.